Well, uh, good evening and a warm welcome to St. David's uh, this evening. Uh, I think we managed to be nicely warm without being too hot, aren't we? Which is, is lovely. And it's nice to be back with you. If you want to know about my holiday, uh, we went fishing in the best trout lake in Europe, I'm told, and we ate sausages. <laughs> but otherwise, it was lovely. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so that was great. Um, uh, and uh, this week, I think the notices are that the midweek worship is here at 7.30 on Tuesday. Are, are there any other notices I've forgotten? Ah, it's the, this week, is it? Right, on Thursday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Okay, should be in my diary. That's fine. Friday, 1 o'clock. Right, PCC meeting, Friday, 1 o'clock. Uh, shall we stand for our opening greeting? Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Raising our eyes to heaven we pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our first hymn is number 563, and we admit verses 3 and 4. Praise to the holiest in the highest. We sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. Most merciful God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to mend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. We declare together glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who is lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on God now and forever. Amen. We sit for readings from the Bible. First reading this evening is taken from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 15, verses 15 to, uh, to 21. O oh Lord, you know, remember me, and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away, now that you're on, know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable? refusing to be healed. Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, and you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. And thank you. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, 
be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay, repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. But leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. We stand to sing number 162, Servant King.
Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by Matthew. Gospel is from Matthew chapter 16, beginning to read from verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what, he has, been, what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. As we stand, let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about your teaching, the teaching of Scripture, so it may help us and guide us in our own lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do sit down. The uh, writings of St. Paul have, uh, I think, three kind of uh, effects. There are some of them which are very clear and very easy and uh, very wonderful and easy to take on. There are some which are not very easy to understand and often not easy to understand because uh, he has complex arguments and he's having those arguments with uh, a culture that we don't live in and we don't fully understand and so the complex arguments uh, that he puts forward we don't understand until we begin to understand uh, what he's arguing with and who and how things were being put. And then there's those uh, other passages which are reasonably easy to understand uh, but rather difficult to actually get on and live. And I think today's passage from Romans is uh, probably of the third category but there's a bit of that second category. Paul encourages us to love one another uh, like brothers and sisters which is a slight problem if you know any brothers and sisters. Uh, I, uh, they seem to be uh, very keen on trying to um, dominate each other and uh, be top dog as far as I can see and many families uh, where uh, they argue cons constantly and uh, no matter how much you tell them they don't need to they still carry on I can't think one of one family that was close to mine that could that happen at all but anyhow all the time you keep trying to persuade them that they don't need to be top dog and they don't need to this and that and anyhow I don't think Paul was trying to say that when he said we should love one another as brothers and sisters. I think he was uh, looking at the context of his day in which family was the essential unit uh, by which everybody lived. It was the uh, people lived cheek and jowl with probably quite a lot of family and uh, they looked after one another in families and uh, made sure that the social security really of one another was provided for by those within their own family. And so there was a real strong emphasis on being a supportive unit uh, as your family and your wider family. Uh, which is why, of course, Jesus spends so much time uh, trying to say that the Israelites didn't look after the widows and orphans as they should because uh, those who had fallen out of that social care system, who were out of that protection of family, were very vulnerable in societies of that kind. And the Israelites were supposed to be a different kind of society, a society that did look after 
those who had fallen by the wayside and those who had uh, become in some ways destitute were always to be restored their land after a certain time and so on. And these things are the things that uh, were to characterize uh, the people of Israel and make them stand out. So what St. Paul is uh, encouraging us to be is built on that idea of the Israelites being a family beyond the blood relatives, but also the teaching of Jesus, which very much teaches us to be brothers and sisters who care for and support one another, not brothers and sisters who argue with one another constantly. That doesn't mean we shouldn't occasionally have disagreement. We shouldn't uh, be willing to speak our minds and be very clear on where we are and try and uh, argue things through so that we get to good and true conclusions. What it does mean is that we need to be those who want the best for everyone, particularly those who are close to us within the church, but also beyond that. And St. Paul encourages the church to be a unit that is very supportive of one another if uh, at times are not in exactly the same song sheet and one where each person is valued and enabled to grow. And he uh, does that uh, so that we might be able to be those who uh, benefit from it, but also those who show what God is like, for God is love and those who live in love live in God. And uh, of course he gives us that wonderful eulogy in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 where we understand God by understanding what love is, by seeing what love is and uh, we can look to that picture and think it's brilliant uh, uh, but I'm not yet up to it because none of us are yet fully there and we can be encouraged to move forward from one degree of glory to another and so it is with our learning to love and care for one another that we are encouraged to continually grow in the way that we do that and reach out and protect and make sure that nobody is left out within the Christian community. But St. Paul goes on beyond that and says that we should love our enemies. And uh, he builds on what Jesus says about loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us. That we should, as much as possible, live at peace with everybody. That we should overcome uh, evil with good. And there is a, a challenge in that because when we are trying to be peaceable and loving and kind, we are up against evil which is often not of that nature. Often it is forceful and destructive and uh, is willing to be coercive and to manipulate those who are gentle and peaceful. And somehow we have to try and find a way through that task of being those who are gentle and peaceful and yet strong and able to hold out for overcoming evil with good, for making sure that our world doesn't function in the ways of greed and selfishness, in the ways of uh, destroying one another, in the ways that so often it does. And the passage from Jeremiah gives us a little bit of uh, an understanding of maybe how we are to do that. Jeremiah finds himself looking at the word of God and being delighted in it. He sees in it something that is uh, a wonderful picture of what the world should be like. He sees uh, the teachings of the law which create this community of love that do make sure that everybody is looked after, that do uh, build up and not destroy. And yet he looks around himself and he sees a people of Judah who are not doing what the law teaches. And he holds on to the teaching that he has seen and says, I'm going to live by that. I'm going to hold on to that even though those around me do not do it. And I'm going to tell people of it and be encouraged. But he doesn't find that easy. He finds that it's, he's discouraged and he's struggling. And God says to him, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing by holding on to that which is true and honest, which is just and merciful. And 
you should keep doing that, he says. Keep trying to make that happen, even when those around you do not uh, want to engage with it. And you will find that some of them do, that the change will come. And sometimes, if it doesn't, continue to keep doing it. As St. Paul says, as much as, as you are able, as much as you are able, live in a way which is peaceable and caring. And so we are uh, encouraged to be those who hold on to the word of God and live it even when uh, it's a challenge. But that can also be difficult and we are encouraged to uh, be those who know that God loves and values us because our security does not depend on our status. It's not that we are uh, amazing at something or that somehow people look uh, to each one of us as uh, something better than other people. But that God says to each one of us, you are the best you. You are the person I made you to be and I love you and I value you. And I know you're not yet there, but I still want you to know you are my special child and I have adopted you into my family and you are part of that family and therefore you are permanently secure. You are saved from your own mistakes by the goodness and generosity of my son who died for you. And therefore you are secure in the knowledge that no matter what people say about you, no matter what mistakes you make, God loves you and has accepted you. And so that security, that security of knowing that you are God's children, that we are adopted as those children enables us to be able to do things where we don't rely on having to hold on to status where we don't need to be the top dog we can be the bottom dog we can be the servant of all and it doesn't matter we can take up our cross and follow Christ and uh, not be worried by what other people think as long as we continue uh, to pursue what God wants which is to seek to bring love into the world, to overcome bad with goodness, to bring about all that might change things for the better, all that might change us for the better, all that might change our families and our community and our church for the better, through our words and our actions. And as we try to make those words and actions work, because it's never easy to find the right words and the right actions, when we're trying to uh, repair ourselves and make ourselves better, let alone when we're trying to help others. We are in a position where we should do what St. Paul suggests, that we should pray, that we should ask God to help us and guide us and strengthen us so that we might be his resource for good in the world, his hands and his feet. We pray that God may enable us to do this and indeed move forward as loving brothers and sisters who show to the world what God is like and support one another to be the best we, a best person we can possibly be. Amen. We are now going to stand and declare our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed and we'll say this all together. Let's declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. The responses today are a bit different. When I say, Lord, we ask for your mercy on us all, the response is, hear us as we bring our prayers before you. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. There are many fine leaders of our church, witnesses and servants, and we pray for them and that they can pers persevere. Your church needs to grow everywhere, but your servants struggle against war, persecution, poverty and hunger, ignorance and evil, and in countries like our own, secular ideas and practices some parts of social media, and again, ignorance. We pray for those who work so hard to serve you. We pray your church will grow in every way it needs to grow, and all that that means. Heavenly Father, we are so sorry that so many in their total ignorance have reduced your name to a swear word. Lord, we ask for your mercy on us all. Hear us as we bring our prayers before you. We pray for our benefits. Most of the above applies here too. We thank you for Philip and the work he does and for all those faithful souls who are always there when a job needs doing. We pray that the, pre the repairs inside the body of this building, which are threatening to be very expensive, are able to be started soon. Lord, we ask for your mercy on us all. Hear us as we bring our prayers before you. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people of this parish and for ourselves. We pray for those ignorant of your love and your word, for the sick and those waiting endlessly for appointments and operations. We pray for those working in the health service, for the lonely, the depressed and anxious and stressed. Let us take a few moments of silence to pray our own thoughts. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your presence here with us. Help us to grow in love and all that that means, in your love and all that that means. Thank you and amen. We stand to share the peace together. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace.
our offertory here. Him is Father, hear the prayer we offer. And we'll omit verse 5 as the music doesn't play a last verse. Unless you all want to sing it in a cappella. So we'll omit it. Um. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We sit or kneel for the thanksgiving prayer, and we use prayer B. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Humbly we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
God, our creator, you fed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In loving trust, we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and all you love this day and evermore. Amen. Our final hymn is number 501, O Jesus, I Have Promised. <laughs>
Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us a life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. In his strength we go.